Example 58.5. What is the probability you draw a four of a kind when choosing five cards from a deck of 52 cards? For example, four kings and the three of hearts is a four of a kind hand. All right, so this problem is a probability problem, but it's not a simple one. So let's try to look at it and see how to figure it out. So we're looking for the probability of a four of a kind hand, right? Probability of a four of a kind. This is quite difficult to do. To answer this, you know, you'd have to break it down. You'd say, well, that's the probability of what? Four cards, right? With the same number, right? Or picture, right? So in other words, what we mean by that is, you know, the four cards have like the number four on them or the number five on them or four cards with the same picture, like all jacks or all kings. And one other card, right? One other card, any other card, right? Any other card. So that's the probability we're trying to figure out. That's not easy to figure out, right? Um, but let's figure out how it would be done. The word end would imply multiplication. And so you might think, well, maybe we should just list a bunch of fractions and multiply them together. Uh, we have to be careful if we do that. When we do that, that implies that order is important. So I'm just going to remind you that uh, and it's something you'll just have to memorize without, I don't want to go into a whole proof of, or to understand why this is true. We could do that, but it would take a lot of time. And remember, these problems are mainly set up for us to just quickly understand how to do example problems. So I don't want to go too heavily into theory here, but if you were to create, for example, five fractions that represent the five selections of cards and you tried to solve the problem that way, you would get it wrong. And the reason why you would get it wrong is mainly because when you do that, you allow for the possibility that um, the same five card hand scrambled up in different orders to be counted separately as if they're different hands. So if we tried that approach, it's, it's not going to work. So what we have to do instead is to use combinations because with cards, as long as you have the same five cards in your hand, it counts as the, the same hand, right? It doesn't matter how many different ways you permutate or scramble up the five cards. It's still the same hand if it consists of the same five cards. So all the different orderings of those five cards should only be counted once. So that means we should be using combinations to solve this. So we're actually going to have two uh, combinations, or actually more than two combinations, but the top and the bottom of the fraction here is going to be filled with combination symbols. So let's start with the um, top part, it would be the number of four, four of a kind hands, right? Four of a kind hands. And again, that's very difficult to figure out. Divided by the total number of five card hands. So we've already looked at this bottom part in another problem. We can do that pretty easily then. For the bottom part of the problem, that's pretty simple. Out of 52 cards, we want to choose five cards. That's all the different five card hands that are possible. We actually saw in a previous example that was something like 2.6 million different possible five card hands. Now, how many of those card hands are actually four of a kind hands? You could literally list all the possible four of a kind hands. You could create a huge list of all those, and when you were done, you know, you would have the answer. But that takes a long time. So to avoid having to do that, the brute force method, I would call that, we're going to use combinations to do it. And the way it's going to work is we're going to think about if you wanted to construct a four of a kind hand, how would you actually have to do that? Well, the way it would be constructed would be as follows. You'd have to say, hey, look, first thing I'd need to do is to figure out which you know, card I'm going to have four of, right? So for example, do I want the queen to be four queens or do I want four kings in the problem, right? We'd have to figure that out. So in other words, of the, if you look at the number of possibilities then, we could pick any one of these cards to be the card that gets four of a kind with, right? So for example, out of the 13 different possible cards that are there, right? So in other words, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen different possible cards that we could choose. So I'm going to say out of thirteen cards, right, I want to choose exactly one of them to be the card that's going to have four of them, right? So four cards of the same number of picture, I'm going to pick which card that's going to be. This notation is the same as the combination notation, right? It's just a little more concise, so I don't have to keep putting the C over and over again. This is 13 choose one. All right, so out of the 13 cards I could pick, I'm going to choose one of them to be the card that I take four from. 
Now, technically, if you want to be precise, once I've picked which one, let's, let's say I decide I want four aces, so I'm going to pick my aces. That's when I do the 13 choose one. I've chosen aces. Now, out of the four aces, I have to choose all four of them. This part of the problem could actually be left out because there's only one way to do that, right? If you choose all four, there's just one way for that to happen. If you work out four choose four, it does give you one. But I just want you to get in the habit of thinking properly here. First, we're going to choose which card is going to be in the four of a card hand, right? And then we're going to choose all of those cards. So now we have all four aces, right? So we're almost done constructing our four of a kind hand. And it's completely general, right? Because this one card could be aces, or it could be kings, or it could be queens, right? Whatever. Whatever card I choose here, I take all four of them. Now we're almost done. We have four of our five cards, but we have to pick the leftover card. And there's two ways to think about this. One way is to say, well, gee, how many cards are left in the deck? Let's say I chose all of these cards, right? So I've gotten all of those. Well, how many cards are left? Well, there's 52 cards original, so they, originally, so there's actually only, what, 48 cards left. And then out of 48 cards, I have to choose one of them. Any card will do. So 48 choose one would work. That's one way to do the problem. So you could say that and finish it up that way. Out of the 48 remaining cards, choose any one of them to be the, the fifth and final card, because it doesn't matter what card it is. Or the other way to do this is to say, hey, same, same thing, right? You know, 52 choose five. You could say, hey, look, out of 13 possible cards, I choose the one card I'm gonna have four of, and then I'll take all four of those cards, right? And then you could say something else. You could say, okay, well, I chose aces, let's say. How many cards are left to choose from? Well, there are 12 different types of cards to choose from. I'll choose, right, one of those to be my leftover card source. In other words, so my one extra card will come from maybe the fives. So maybe I'll have four aces in one of the fives. So I'll choose to choose from the fives. And then from the fives, I have to predict pick which particular five I want to fill my hand with. In other words, do I want it to be four aces and the five of clubs, or do I want it to be four aces and the five of spades, right? That sort of thing. So out of the remaining, so once I choose fives, right? So out of 12 remaining suits, I choose, uh, or 12 remaining cards to choose from, I choose the one you know set of fives to work from. Then among the fives, out of those four cards, I'm gonna choose the one five that I wanna use in my hand. And this will give you the same answer as this, because 48 choose one is actually 48. 12 choose one is 12, four choose one is four, so four times 12 gives you 48. You get the same answer either way. Two different ways to think about it, but it's equivalent, the logic is equivalent, so of course, hopefully it should give us the same answer. So all of this is our answer and we'd have to work it out. Let me just do that for you, um, since you know, you're probably curious. I think we already worked out 52 choose five. Let's do that real quick. So if I do 52, I'm gonna press math in my calculator and go over to where the probability is, take combinations, take the number five, and I end up with, you know, 2,598,960. Okay, so there's my denominator. For the top, it's pretty easy. It's gonna be 13. When you do 13 choose one, that's 13. Four choose four is just one, you can check that. And 12 choose one is 12, and four choose one is four. And if you put all that in, you're gonna get basically 13 times one times 48, or 13 times 48. So 624 over 2.6 million, or 2,598,960. And so that's your answer. And if I divide that by the answer there, 2598960, it works out to be, scientific notation again, three zeros and 240. So it's a pretty small probability that that occurs. So a pretty small chance that you would grab uh, five cards from a deck of 52 cards and randomly pull out a four of a kind. But there's your answer.